You're going to love this one because uh, we got a new poll. This is from uh, Marist National. Almost half of Americans think the U.S. could erupt into a second civil war in their lifetime. 47 percent. And uh, the funny thing is it breaks down. You know, what's really weird is um, I don't I don't quite understand this. It says a uh, majority of women, 51 percent, believe there's a good chance it will happen. Fifty seven percent of men disagree. Mostly men don't think it will happen. It's women who think there will be a civil war. Now, the reason that's significant, the French Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution, they say were instigated because women got up and rose and rose up. When women get unhappy and get involved in politics, things start to destabilize. So if women think the civil war is coming, I don't know, I feel kind of worried about that. But uh, what say you, good sir? Well, like I said earlier, I, I can't think of a time in history when corruption has reached this level and it's been peacefully walked back. The question is when. So a lot of people say it's going to happen next year, no matter what happens in this election. I think it's inevitable that we'll have another civil war in this country. But I, what I can't decide is whether or not it's going to be within the next 10 years or within the next 100 years. That's where I struggle. This is what we were talking about a little bit earlier, that uh, when you look at polarization, it's generational. Yeah. So again, as I described it is, it's a piece of paper being torn from the smallest, from the youngest generation up uh -huh. to the top. Yep. But it's really not so much that we're, we're tearing it. It's that... Just imagine you've got this thread and the older generation's at top and the bottom is splitting as it moves down. Yeah. Actually, one way to put it is, is the, uh, our society is a giant block of cheese. Right. And there is a wedge to slice that cheese and the cheese block is being pushed down. Right. The division is, a, is an increasing proportion of the political landscape. As the older generation uh, uh, dies and the younger generation becomes either gra gets grabbed by the left or the right, New people entering the voting block are going to be hyperpolarized to uh -huh. further and further degrees. And the older generation that overlap on the Democrat Republican side are dying and no longer part of the equation. So 2028, 2032. Well, 20, I think 2028 the is the voter fourth turnout turning. thing, too. Like I said before yeah. the before we started streaming today, the voter turnout in 1860 was giant. And we saw record voter turnout in 2020. The higher the voter turnout, the more politically divided that people are, in my opinion. And we always hear advocating, everybody needs to vote, participate in the process. If you have a high voter turnout, that's a very good indicator that you're close to a civil war. I also think this, I mean, this poll says that the youngest generation, it's like Gen Z and millennials, 58% are, are, you know, think there's a likelihood that there could be a civil war in this country. I think that is an indication that it could potentially come because the older generations that <clears throat> at one time thought, you know, well, we're actually unified by our culture or unified by religion or whatever else, like they will ultimately leave uh, positions of power in this younger generation that has always seen politics as the dividing line and increasingly more so with younger generations, they will then step into the positions right. and will say, well, we knew this was inevitable. Where an older generation would say, no, no, we're, we're supposed to be together. We're all one country. This is actually my point. I mean, take a look at this. 58% of Gen Z and millennial voters believe civil war is likely. 19% of silent generation. 46% of Gen X and 34% of boomers. So let's break it down. Silent generation is the oldest. Only 19% right. think civil war is likely. Why? Because all of these people, Democrat, Republican, who are in their late 60s and 70s, go hang out and play bridge or whatever. And they're like, but we agree on most things. How could there be a civil war? Then you get baby boomers, 34%. Same issue. They're meeting up and saying, but we agree on most things. But I do think, you know, John across the street's got some weird views. Gen Xers are more online, more active, more political, and they're seeing what's going on. And Gen Z and Melissa 58. If mm -hmm. that trend continues, when Gen Alpha enters the voting block, it's going to be 70% of Gen Alpha that says yes. Then what, what, what comes after Gen Alpha? I don't know. I can look it up. Well, and then the question is, the, the question is who in the, in the minds of the pollsters, who is, is fighting who in this, in this imaginary civil war and then who wins? Because before it was very clear, South versus the North, but now who's, it seems who, more like urban versus rural, but who, is, same, who is fights fi in the war? Yeah, who, who, well, does, who do people foresee will fight in the Civil who War? Who was fighting in the Syrian Civil War? I don't know. It was, it was, it was like 13 different factions. Thir 13 different factions. And then ultimately just be, it, like they all got absorbed into ISIS. So you think that's what's going to happen in this next Civil War won't be two sides, like what we think of the traditional the Ameri American Civil War? The American Civil War is pockets. atypical in terms of most countries' histories. So the Spanish mm. Civil War is a better example. And it's usually urban versus rural. And usually it is the rural that wins.
I'm a little bit more optimistic. Um, I think unlike in many other countries on planet Earth, in America, we have a lot to fight for and a lot of great opportunity. Um, a lot of our institutions are incredibly established. There's a defund the police movement in our country that didn't go anywhere policy wise. Um, people in our country still support our military. People still have faith in the Supreme Court and the law. People still believe that courts exist and are, are functioning properly. Um, so this, uh, this is a place where a country where we're also given many freedoms and many opportunities for things to go astray if people actually wanted them to. We have the First and Second Amendment. People could say almost anything and have firearms to back it up. But we haven't seen huge uprisings of armed people, although I hear about these militias yeah. throughout the country. I haven't seen these large uprisings of gangs of See, people I think we have, politically taking We lack a culture that reminds people that we are actually united front. I mean, my theory would be that the silent generation lived through things like school integration and all kinds of social change that actually made them question like what what do we want as a culture what are our values and ultimately right. say this is something that we are collaboratively working on our country is worth preserving and in fact even through difficult uh, change, we are ultimately rallying around the idea that we are Americans and we have a, a shared vision. Right. Which is Whereas, why Joe Biden's the president of unity. Well, and that's the thing. They say that word over and over again, but younger people actually look at people who don't agree with them politically as an enemy. They view them as a threat, I right? Like do. This I, I'm, I, I'm serious, but and I, I think you're absolutely right in your analysis. I even, I'm 33 years old and I've gotten to the point where my sentiments toward people who disagree with me politically have gotten much more combative. Well, and this is reinforced Personally. by the idea that And I'm not even saying that's a good thing. I'm just saying that about myself. Right. Well, this is reinforced by the fact that certain schools in certain districts in certain like that vote a certain way have rules that like, well, a kid can transition here and we'll call them by whatever pronouns, but we won't tell the parents because we view those parents as potential threats to these children who are a different right. voter block. I mean, I think that ultimately... Right. Which makes me feel combative to, towards uh, those these teachers. These issues are important, <laughs> but I think even, you know, despite Joe Biden's economic downturn and the issues like trans issues that I think are very significant people f start civil wars when they don't have things worth fighting for and protecting when things are going bad and astray for them and they don't have anything going on for them in our country we do have it relatively oh, well a good amount of compared to other countries no 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 like where, what civil wars were started because people had bad was bad for people well uh, as I understand civil wars are generally started by the civil wars that I think we're seeing right now that are that are possibly happening like in the Arab Spring and things like that people not being fed enough people not being paid enough but people the, are but discontent people about to lose their but slaves but those are revolutions so with the with the Arab Spring the governments toppled instantly and then they replaced them whereas civil wars are factional violence based on ideology like the Spanish Civil War was was the communists and the anti-communists and then you know of course the there's a lot of leftists that argue that it was like fascistic militarism on the right or whatever but it was basically communists were going around and doing horrible things and where ideology was spreading. In fact, I think it's the opposite. I think what caused a lot of the, um, I mean, certainly you can make an argument about, about the Bolsheviks in Russia and the struggles that Russia is you know, going through in terms of food and the French Revolution. But uh, I think we saw with Europe in the early 1900s, things were too good uh, in some places. So with the United States, you have idle hands being the devil's playground. You have young people who don't have to do any work and they have no purpose and they're bored. They don't understand. I mean, look. Man, I'm not, I I'm not, I'm not, you I'm, think people go to civil war because they're bored? Well, yes. I do well, see at the most elite colleges, that's where we are seeing the yes. hardest, yeah, the, most aggressive the versions strike amongst of the but, 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 most well-fed. <laughs> but let me yeah. explain. Young people today are struggling. Yes. Some of them legitimately because yes. the system is busted. Some of them because they were not raised properly by their parents to know how to work and produce and, and survive. So what happens is you have two political parties. One is a parasite class where they, they believe that the government should print as much money as possible. Uh, uh, they, they believe in deficit spending. Uh, yeah, monitor monetary theory. Exactly. And so all of this does is leech off of the working class. That system collapses. And what we're seeing now is an expansion of it where many people are of the mindset that the government should pay their bills, should print more money, deficit spending and things like this, which result in hyperinflation. Then when inflation happens, what does Joe Biden do? It's the corporations that are ripping you off. Right. They, they, blame, they blame it on capitalism, but it's actually kind of fascism. Then they reenact more government policies, which destroy the system further right. until it collapses. And that's intentional for the communists. The reason this is happening is because idle hands is the devil's playground. If these people had to wake up in the morning and feed the animals, and then work all day, and had very little time to do anything, there'd be no communist revolution. They would just be working, living, and they would be content with life. But they want what you have because you're working and they're not. So it's so, envy even more than boredom. 100% envy. Communism is all envy. They look at people 
who, uh, I mean, look, look at the tenets of communism, what they think. The, I, I love this, you know, hearing these people argue about socialism and they're like, socialism is when labor, the workers own the company and not their bosses. Well, what, what, no, what did they say? They said, when, you're, when your labor is controlled by the people and you and not your boss. And I'm like, right. in capitalism, the labor is controlled by you. In communism, your labor is controlled by the state. But they lie to implement these things. In a free market capitalist society, you are free to sell your labor for whatever you can get for it. The problem is, in today's society, you've got kids who have no sellable skills because of the way society right. told them to live right. their lives, which is a problem. This, I think, leads to anger, animosity, fear, confusion, and, and false prophets. Political uh, individuals who come up and say, I have the solution to what ails you. It's called communism. And they go, okay. And then they start burning down, burning down buildings. Right. Well, and that's what I'm very concerned after. If you read like the fourth turning, and if, if you think that maybe we're on the verge of an economic collapse 2028, I'm very much concerned about the fork in the road that we will be at. Whereas a country we're going to choose, I think much like the Weimar Republic had to choose, Germans had to choose at the end of the Weimar Republic, between communism and fascism as the solution. And that's why I advocate for populism and I wrote this book is because I'm hoping there's a third option that's healthy and doesn't result in the death of millions of people. But I think we're quickly coming up on a place where it is going to reach the level of desperation and simultaneously the level of boredom necessary to catalyze a collapse that brings us to choose between full-on communism versus No fascism. one thought civil war was possible in 18, 1860. Thanks for checking out this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel and we will see you all there.